Doesn't seem like you guys are missing Andrew Patch much. He went up to Nebraska. How do you feel the D-line? I know uh, Philip Winemaster's little brother has stepped in. Philip's playing well. Tell me a little bit about your D-line. Yeah, they're kind of the unsung heroes. You know, if your linebackers are making a lot of tackles, something's got to be going on good up front. They're, right. keep, they're keeping those linemen off of them. And uh, you, you named it. Philip's been a, a guy all year that's made some great plays. He, he got the game ball one, one game, I think, a Benedictine game because we knew he was all over the ball. Levi Calhoun's made tackle after tackle, running sideline to sideline. You know, Brad Timmage is a, is a guy that's kind of been quiet, but he took the place of, of uh, Andrew Patch and, and has stepped in well for us. And, and the, the thing I'm encouraged, Kyle Winemaster is another guy, a young guy that's come in and played well. And then Alpheus Williams at the other DN position, it gives us that speed rusher and a guy that can chase down some stuff in the open field. But, you know, we're encouraged they're all young. Yeah. I mean, everybody's back in that group. So they're just going to get bigger and stronger and better. And, uh, you know, as the year goes on, we still have a few tough tests coming right. with some spread offenses and some speed. And, you know, Coach Thorne, Coach Cruzy, and, and Coach Oligo have done a great job in preparing our defense week to week and changing and making little adjustments that, that allow our guys to make plays. And we hope that continues the rest of the year. All right. And uh, speaking of those tough tests you guys coming up, this weekend, William Jewell on our homecoming at Liston Stadium. Uh, tell me what you, what you expect out of that game and, and what you want to happen in that game. Can't get any better than that. You know, William yeah. Jewell at home on homecoming. You know, uh, there's going to be a lot of alumni, old guys there. You know, we're, we're taught we can't lose to William Jewell. And uh, our guys will be fired up. They'll be fired up. We played to overtime at third place last year. Uh, basically, both teams are back just a year older. They got a nice quarterback, Benny Palmer, that, that makes a lot of plays if you allow him to get out of the pocket. Our goal is to keep him in and uh, make sure we corral him and tackle him when he tries to break through and make a big run. And then defensively, if you, I haven't looked at their stats, but I know they've got to be up there in the league pretty good. They're pretty solid. Uh, they run well. They play a basic defense. They tackle well. And then they create some turnovers by stripping the football. I think really the, the guys in the back, they're secondary. Their two corners come up in your face and jam you and, and, and run with you, and they make your passing game difficult from a standpoint of a timing. You know, if you're wanting to throw outside and those guys keep jamming you, uh, the quarterback gets a little nervous when he doesn't get his guy, you know, at, at the depth that he wants him on time. So we're going to have to do some tinkering in our pass game to, to get some guys open. And then I feel like. You know, our, hopefully our trio of running backs. Last week we missed Blaine Crow. That was a tough loss. He has an ankle sprain, didn't travel with us to Graceland, and, and he's a big cog in our running game. Right. And then uh, Frank Owens got a little dinged up. I think he's going to be all right, and Richie Bryant's ready to go. So we're going to have to run the football. Uh, to make it happen on offense. Yeah, so we can look for the run to set up the mm -hmm. pass, in this case against Jewel on Saturday. Yep. Um, in terms of how the conference is shaking up so far, uh, you guys are 2-2 two and two in the conference. Um, obviously, Linwood has some tremendous talent, but where do you see them in the conference and where do you see us in the conference? I, I think it's tough to look ahead. You know, you got to keep your guys focused week to week because anybody can beat anybody. And you do, the, the hack is wacky. You know, the, they're going to go knock each other off, which, which happened early in the year. And now those better teams that got beat early in the year are starting to gel. So... We've got to get a win at home this week and then worry about breaking our streak on the road. Our JV team did a nice job of going to Mid-America uh, Monday night and winning for us on the road to kind of make us feel good about going on the road. They're 3-0 and now, JV, so we really feel good about our young group. Now uh, we've got to take care of business at home this weekend and then get on the road and get a big win. Uh, I believe it's Evangel the following week. So it doesn't get any easier. Uh, and. And the, as far as Lindenwood's concerned, I think they're sitting in a nice place. You know, they beat Mid-America, who's right there in, in the top two, and we still got to play Mid-America. So a lot can happen. Missouri Valley's going to have something to say about the whole deal in the end. You know, they're the reigning champs. They've been there. So it's, it's going to be a wild few weeks, but I think we just need to take them one at a time, the old cliche, right. and then worry about what other people, you know, let them knock each other off. And if we get on a little roll, then we can get back in the mix of the league championship. You know, it's tough in a league like this because right now there's five teams in the top 25 from our league. And we still got to play three of them. So 
a lot, a lot of things can happen and a lot of things can change within the league standings. Sounds tough, but it sounds like an awful lot of opportunity for you sure. guys as well. Well, Coach, great. Good luck this weekend. Uh, we'll definitely look for a result on our homecoming. Back to you, Kelsey. Thanks, Chris. And now stay tuned after these short messages. Welcome back. And now a feature on the problems that student-athletes face here at Baker. Nearly half of the student body here at Baker are not only students, but athletes. Here are some players with their take on the pressure. The Baker men and women's soccer team has already missed several classes. Last week, both teams traveled to St. Louis to compete in a night game against Lindenwood. Both teams didn't arrive back at Baker until 4 in the morning, still required to attend 7.30 classes. I'm with Chelsea Dunn, women's soccer player here at Baker University. Chelsea, tell me how you deal with your stress and your time management dealing being a student athlete here at Baker. Um, well, I haven't missed too many days, but the days that I do miss, the hardest part is trying to get all my assignments in before the day I miss. So kind of the few days before I miss, it's really, really stressful trying to get all my work done. Baker Volleyball has also missed several classes this semester. Just recently, head coach Kathy Allen canceled a tournament in order to make sure her athletes would not be missing the same class twice in one week. Freshman Macy Harshberger has worked hard to develop a relationship with professors to demonstrate her commitment to her education. Most of my teachers are very cooperative. If I start to fall behind, most of them have been really good about, you know, helping me get caught up and stay caught up on all my work. So they've been very helpful. Even though football hasn't missed too many classes this semester, they still find it hard to develop a consistent study schedule with the constant changing practice times and the demanding mandatory meetings. I'm here with Frank Owen, senior on the football team. Frank, do you feel like your grades have suffered being a student athlete? And how do you manage your time being a student athlete? Uh, pretty much I just have a schedule and um, I have I set a time to where I'm going to do my homework. So after practice, I have about two hours where I do nothing but schoolwork. And I don't know if my grades have suffered because I've always been, a, I've always been an athlete. So. We're here with men's soccer player, Tank Sikese. Tank, what's the hardest thing for you being a student athlete here at Baker? I think balancing out the schedule of doing homework and just finding time to do your homework and study for classes, that's the hardest thing for me. Dual sport athletes miss classes all year round, therefore making it even more difficult to balance school and athletics. And now, Haley O'Borney, a dual sport athlete here at Baker University. Haley, tell me what are some of the disadvantages you face being a double sport athlete in here at Baker? The thing is, like, I miss like a lot of classes and I'll be missing it all year instead of like just half the year. I'll have to like work really hard to like keep like up my grades and do my homework and stuff and make sure I just stay focused instead of just concentrating on sports. Sharice Presley, KNBU TV. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to catch next week's episode of Wildcat Chat. This has been Kelsey Epperson, KNBU.